Well, let, let's open up the meeting then. Um, first order of business, let's uh, approve the minutes. I would move that we approve the minutes on January 19th, 2021. I'll second that motion. And does anyone have any any changes or any discussion whatsoever about this? Oh, no discussion, but I did notice on the second page that it says uh, Greater Upper Valley AWD instead of GUV SWD. That was just in one instance. I'm sure it was an oversight by uh, Martha. There's no malicious intent. And if she could change that, I would be so happy. You're holding up the meeting there, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so I left out the, okay, the S. S, in, yeah, it yeah. should be S instead of A. A yeah, yeah, sorry. That's our, I accept your apology. It's supposed to be a slight defect in everything. Yep. <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. Heard is aye. Still aye. Aye. Yes, we heard from everyone. Good, thank you. And then um, let's uh, let's do the uh, orders right right now. Um, okay, I would move that we accept the accounts payable up to the first of February, twenty twenty one. I'll second that. This okay. Mary. Are there any questions? Um. Yes, I would like to hold up the meeting to point something out. Um. Wait, the waste bill to me is seems so expensive. Is that just once a month, Dave? Uh, that, that billing is once a month, correct? Uh, you know, two hundred sixty-four dollars to take out a few bags of trash is. I know it's a service; they're picking it up, right? But well, it's it's not just a few bags of trash. That's trash from Damon Hall. It's trash from the library. Is trash from you know it's collected from the, the highway garage, accumulated, put in a dumpster, and then taken away. So is it is it one dumpster? Uh, it is yes. And are they taking how much recycling do they take? Uh, a, a decent amount. And are food scraps separated? I don't think we have food scraps. <laughs> oh, that was a trick question. We'll talk about uh, that some other time. So you may want to take note that, um, you know, that monopolistic uh, or the monopoly that hovers over um, our solid waste uh, removal is at play here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You may yeah. know that Casella bought out Able Waste, I don't know, maybe six months ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, okay. Point taken. Thank you. Okay. Dave, I have a question. Yep. Just below Casella on the front page there is the uh, expense for record preservation. That slide maybe answers to this, but that seems like a lot of money. I just wonder what we're getting. And that was that? to Gordon's question. Um, this is the second or third outlay, and I just don't know what the total budget is for for the records management. That all of that money is not coming out of tax money. That's coming out of the grant we got from the state of Vermont, plus the money that's set aside from every recording for records preservation. So there's no tax money spent there. Okay. <clears throat> Brian or Clyde, who who is the actual vendor? Are they are they doing the work or are they just a software vendor? I'll leave it to Brian. <laughs> I'm assuming we're talking about COTS, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Clyde pursued the grant initially and uh, they uh, house the database for our land records and they were contracted to scan uh, essentially all of our land records and then they indexed a portion of those 
Uh, and so it's an online database that we use to uh, have a record of our land records. We still have the physical copies, but um, but they just perform, uh, you know, they maintain the database for us. And it's got huge benefits because our title searchers and other people can access uh, the legal documents remotely. Um, so in COVID, our title searchers have been able to look at the database and pay a fee to uh, view and uh, print copies. Um, and then it's much easier for us to manage in the clerk's office as well, mm -hmm. as opposed to NIMRIC. Okay, so that was my next question. So it's not, uh, it is a private organization. They have their own database license and uh, we just use everything remotely and down the wire, so to speak. Yes. Okay. Uh, what about the budget questions? It seems like the, this numbers, we've paid this before, but what is the, what is the total cost for this? Clyde, maybe you can speak. I, I don't know what the initial total was for uh, for COTS to get in, but I believe it's $170 per month. Uh, it's a $160 a month $160. maintenance fee. Uh, the initial, the cost of scanning 75,000 pages of records going back to 1984 and <clears throat> indexing from 99 to 20 well current because we did we had previously they could pull an index for those uh i think the total bill was about twenty seven thousand dollars but it was okay uh, we we got fourteen thousand from the state and well it actually come out of the um enhancement money that the fed sent and then we had close to, I think, maybe Martin knows for sure, but I think I had close to $20,000 in a reserve account that, well, currently $4 from every page that's recorded in the documents goes into that fund to maintain records and uh, hopefully in the future replace the vault when it needs to be expanded, so. Wow, the famous crack in the vault. <laughs> Well, there have been cracks in that vault for a long time, and it's it came up when they when they put in the handicapped access. We figured out why, or I figured out why, and I'm not an engineer, but they never put the base of the vault down as far as the footings of Damon Hall, and the land it was built on was filled from the cellar hole of Damon Hall. And even though it sat there for 50 years, it wasn't compacted as hard as what was underneath. So that's the crack up situation. So but Gordon, eventually I'm sure the, the vault will have to be expanded. Gordon, so. I apologize for piggybacking on your question. But that's that was, fine. Bill, Phil, we can get you a, a little bit more detailed breakout on, on the expenses to date, what was covered by a grant, what was covered by just the records restoration, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I can get that for you. Sure. And are these guys the only players in town, or was are there others? Um... Well, there are other players. Okay. But I went with COP Systems out of recommendation of a multiple clerks, and the fact that the company has been in business a hundred years with only two families owning the business. Mm -hmm. One of the other services that we could have used has been sold three times in the last. 10 years and every time it gets sold you know how it is you know right. something gets sold and service goes away <laughs> all right are there any other questions so i think we have a motion did we get a second i don't recall we did curtis says yes so I'll we are of, yeah all in favor of approving the uh, the uh, orders, um, say aye, please. Mary aye. says aye. 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 Okay. Very good. So that's done.
All right. Uh, so, um, good, good day for public comments. If anybody's out there that has a comment or a question, this is your chance. <laughs> Gordon, I'm just going to throw out, uh, and I saw Martin used it twice already, but uh, this is kind of also uh, relating to last meeting. There was quite a bit of back and forth on the chat. Um, I'd like to remind the board in particular and anybody um, sitting in is that um, one, the chat we can't, uh, it's not picked up by everybody, so it may not make the minutes. Uh, also, uh, public comment is for this period of time now that we're in. Uh, once we get past the public comment, it's generally a select board meeting. It's for the, the business of the select board. Uh, if anybody wants to make a comment or to ask a question, they should utilize the, the, um, the raise your hand button. Uh, if they start throwing things out via chat or there's kind of a a, uh, a backroom discussion, so to speak, on the chat. Um, part of this, while a select board is in session, is really not appropriate. It wouldn't happen if we were live in person. So people should just, if they have comments or if they have questions, they should raise their hand. And then Gordon, as the chair, you can pick on them or choose not to pick on them, however you want to run the meeting. But um, we should just keep that in mind. Well, I guess everybody in Heartland is happy. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, so let's move on. All right. So the next thing, uh, we don't have any old business to worry about today. The next thing is um, the certificate certification of the, of the fact, I guess there are no appeals and uh, more suits pending from the uh, Lister's office. So. Um, is this one of those this uh, is, Dave where we can appoint some we can appoint one person to sign it or do we all need to sign it? I think we normally uh, we all sign. Curtis, there's actually three things that need to be signed. Um, so I think that in this case, if I can get all five of you guys to come in and sign the three would be best. Um, otherwise generally just one would be okay. Stacy, do you want to explain what we're signing just a little bit briefly? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so this is um, required uh, by statute from the state of Vermont this time of year that um, they ask we sign a this certificate. Um, so it basically, it's if you have no appeals pending or no suits pending on the um, last year's grand list so the 2020 grand list um then you we it's basically just a form certifying to that effect for the state that there are no pending appeals no pending suits for this grand list so it's kind of a way of letting the state know that this grand list is sort of closed out um and happily for this year there are no pending appeals or pending suits um at this point in time on the grand list so we uh we can close it out. Everything has been finalized and finished for the year. That's great. Thank you so much, Stacy. You're very welcome. So I don't think there's any action needed here in the minutes. We just have to sign. Is that right, Dave? Um, or not? I think that uh, it's probably best that um, you accept it make a motion to accept it so it's you know it was on the agenda it's so kind of re it's reflected in the minutes okay so i can move that we accept the certificate of no appeal or suit pending for year 2020. Very good second i'll uh, phil i'll second the motion good I don't think we need any further discussion. So, uh, all in favor? Curtis, I. Go on. Gordon, I. 
Martha, aye. Mary, are you there someplace? I think you're muted, Mary. <laughs> Sorry, Mary says aye. Good, thank you. Okay, um, so now we're down to appointments. Um, I think the main one is uh, our new town clerk. Kind of a big deal here. <laughs> Feeling good about it, Ryan? Absolutely, yeah. Good. So, Gordon, I think you may want to, or I can point out that um, Clyde is now officially retired. Happened on Friday. So, uh, congratulations to Clyde, but uh, that's what brings up the need to appoint Brian as the new town clerk. Yeah, we've talked about it so much, I guess, that I, I guess I assumed everybody understood, but I suppose there are people out there that don't. But, uh, Yes, Clyde. Uh, been a good, been a good session. <laughs> and yes, things have to. There's always things changing, moving on from one to another. Pretty normal. So this is a good one, I think. So good, good that you can relax, Clyde. Isn't it? Yes, no. How how relaxed are you in retirement? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know what they say, twice as much husband and half as much money, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it goes. All right, so um, I think we need a, mo uh, a motion. I would move that we appoint Brian Strofolino to be the town clerk until town meeting 2021. And I'll second that motion. Um, let's see, do we need any? This is no, there really isn't much of anything to discuss. Um, Brian, you've got your, your name on the ballot, I assume. You're going to have. I have filled out my consent of candidate form. Oh, we should. That'll work out. I don't know why it wouldn't. Very good. So, all in favor? No. All right. Mary, Mary aye. Wouldn't I? Did we hear from everyone? Yeah, Martha said aye twice. Good. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Brian. Thank you. Okay. I'm honored to. Follow in Clyde's footsteps and more so to serve our community. So thank you. Good. That's great. Very good. So Gordon, Clyde's retirement also um, creates a need to appoint a 911 coordinator. Yeah. Uh, we have opted to um, direct this one towards um, the listers. We figure it's the kind of the better fit. In the, in the interim anyways uh, and therefore going to ask the select board to uh, appoint the chair of the board of listers um, the, the position itself uh, as the 911 coordinator um, we hope this to be um, an interim move as the ordinance administrator uh, that we have in the budget would pick this um, responsibility up once we have that position in place, but to bridge the gap between Clyde's retirement and that step, uh, we ask that uh, again, the chair of the board of listers take on this responsibility. And the listers agree. <laughs> the, en the enthusiasm is just bumbling <laughs> kind of a, over there. Kind of a weak nod there. 
so, so yes, um, we we agreed to do this. Um, it's you know knowing that we're just basically going to be maintaining and keeping up with whatever comes in until the uh, the uh, ordinance administrator is a it gets some um, rolling. Well, I'm assuming your chair, Stacy. That- yes, I am the chair of the board of listers currently. Okay. So I can move to appoint the chair of the board of listers to be the 911 coordinator. Until as do we as do we have to specify an until or will we just change it um, when the new person comes on, Dave? Uh, you would need to you can change it when the person comes on. Okay. Any other discussion on this? All in favor? Martha, aye. Aye. No, aye. Curtis, aye. Curtis, aye. Curtis, aye. Okay, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Stacy. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Oh, thank you. It's a little self-serving by doing it as well. And congratulations, as Gordon said. <laughs> well, it's important. If you don't believe it. Um, Talk to the fireman. Um, so, um, Dave, you might want to explain the certificate of mileage. I know what it is, but I don't know if everybody does. So, I guess some people out there listening would like to. Uh, well, that. It, it has a bit to do with the uh, the money that we get from the state of Vermont uh, for our mm-hmm. town highways. Um, it's based upon the mileage that we have. There's been no changes this year. Uh, If we had adopted um, mileage or put up a new road or something to that effect, we would need to add it. Uh, If we threw up a road, if we discontinued one, we would need to subtract it and certify that. It it is kind of a, um, a detailed process. We did this when we changed the, um, the legal trail over uh, between um, Heartland and West Windsor um, off of Best Road. Uh, it also has to do with the mapping. Um, it is mapped. Um, we need to do a detailed drawing of anything that we add or subtract um, along with a survey if we have it and send it to uh, the state of Vermont. Uh, we didn't do anything this year, so uh, we maintained the mileage that we had as of uh, last year at this time. And um, we simply need to uh, accept this as well uh, into the into the records and um, sign it when you come in to sign the other ones, and we can we can move forward. Okay, um, I, I'm I'm guessing that you'd like a, a motion on this just to so it'll be in the record that we are doing it. Yes, please. So, so I would look for a motion to that effect. I would move that we accept the certificate of highway mileage for year ending February 10, 2021. I'm not sure where you got the date. Is that that is? Uh, it's on the document, Gordon. On, on the form. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. I did. Thank you. I don't have it right in front of me. It's in the pile here. Okay. Um, any other discussion on that? All in favor? Mary, aye. Martha, aye. Very aye. Good night. Very good. Thank you all. Good. Good. Moving right along. So, <laughs> uh, Gordon, when are we going to talk about the Green Mountain Power? enclosure that was uh, advanced notice package. Bill, it's under correspondence. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so we can, um, Dave, you want to talk about the notes? Point. Uh, so, yep, so COVID-19, uh, we reopened Gaiman Hall today. Um, 
most of the traffic was for uh, tax payments, as you can imagine. Uh, we're open two at a time um, as you come in. Uh, if you want to um, look at the land records or, or, or uh, transactions or anything to that effect, uh, you still need to make an appointment with uh, Brian in his office so that we don't get uh, um, you know, too many people or too many lawyers trying to get in at the same time, try and keep that organized and spaced. Uh, as far as the three corners intersection goes, um, that continues to move forward. Uh, we did need to get a, um, a temporary easement. We'll need to get that from the property owners at Sumner's Mansion. Um, Jim um, Barlow has put that together. I've got it here. It will need to be approved by the state of Vermont, one of the next steps before I can have them sign it, but uh, that has been put together. Uh, as far as the highway department goes, um, the grader went in for, um, actually went into, uh, for one of the wheels, one of the tires needed to be sealed. Um, however, we did a preventive maintenance while we were in there. Uh, that came to just under $6,000, $5,900. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on that, that that's coming down the pike. Um, probably next meeting, you'll see that. Uh, however, um, as I put in your notes, I don't think that has, I believe that's the first time that it's gone in for preventive maintenance um, work. So obviously um, they came across a few things and um, it did cost us some money. Uh, we hope to do that more regularly. So it's not um, just a simple $6,000 every time, um, but um, did occur. And it will need to go back actually for more um, next fiscal year. They did flag some things uh, in addition to what was done, but uh, we put that off to um, next fiscal year. So just know that um, it will go back perhaps maybe August or maybe after um, September when things slow down a little bit when we're not using the greener every day, but um, something again we'll need to continue to work on and, and keep an eye on. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wilton seems far away. Is that the only dealership that can actually get the service? Or is that a um, sure? It is the, I believe it's the closest one. Okay. Um, Martin, you can help me out on that, but um, it is the one that we purchased it from. Uh, okay. We also purchased our bucket loader from them, um, and um, that's kind of where it went back to. Either okay. way, you're going to need to put it on a flatbed and truck it, but. Um, uh, I believe that's the closest. Uh, snow, snow tonight. Snow tonight. Um, it has been kind of a consistent thing for us, although tonight we're going to get much more snow. But um, for instance, last week we had a lot of, you know, hour squalls or, you know, just enough snow that we have to go out and sand. Um, and or drop the plow, but not really accumulating to a whole lot. Um, so it's kind of kept us busy without really causing too much damage, which is good and bad. Um, it's kind of a um, thorn in our side, but uh, then again, we haven't had um, to, to do too much um, since that 30 inches that we had over the holidays. Dave, can uh, I Regarding highway and COVID, are you still maintaining the same COVID protocols for the highway department or are you putting them back together? No, we have not put them back together. And um, um, <clears throat> we have not put them back together. We don't plan on putting them back together uh, until maybe later this month when we see the last few years we've had kind of a a, a deep thaw at the end of February, kind of spring-like conditions, where we really had to get out and um, do some, some, drop some gravel and, and hard pack and stuff like that. Uh, I will note, um, we have again had um, at least one person of the highway department that has um, a family member has come into contact with somebody who's COVID-19 positive. 
So the separation has been uh, a good thing, will continue to be a good thing. This particular person I suspect will maybe out for two weeks, if not maybe more. So um, again, yes, we've, we've kept them split and will continue to do so um, until we need to get together for that spring work. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I did send uh, a draft agreement to Art Lins at uh, Able Waste. Um, sent that a couple of weeks ago. I haven't heard back from him. Um, did send him a follow-up email um, yesterday or today. Um, as soon as he gives me some feedback, we can proceed with that um, and, and continue forward. Uh, also, as I put in my update to you, if you recall, we've spoken a few times about the Coley property. So I will look forward or we'll start the process probably this week in drafting an agreement with the Coley family um, that would enable them to sell that property. Uh, so I look forward to moving that forward as well. Continue to do a fair amount of work on the town report. Uh, Laura's been working with that with Michelle. Um, we've finished up a lot of the financial stuff. Hope to get that finished up and off of our plate. We can't finalize it until uh, we are beyond the statutory dates um, of some of the, the, the things that can still be submitted since we put town meeting off. Um, people can still submit an appropriation for the town. Um, people can still put um their paperwork in for the town office so we can't put the um the warning together so the finalization of that all will need to wait but we hope to have it all done kind of put it aside even have a draft done by the printer and then um once that warning comes through we can we can finish that off and and be done with it Last thing I'll just mention, Roger Shepard did announce his retirement from the Planning Commission. Uh, that uh, adds to Bob Bibby, who um, retired a little bit earlier, a couple months ago. Uh, also, Wes Johnson stepped down. Just um, don't think that he felt as though he was a good fit for it. Um, he was relatively new to it. So we'll be advertising for the Planning Commission, um, three new members coming up here shortly. Um, and try and fill that to kind of correspond with the new year um, in what would normally be town meeting. Hey, Dave, I've got a question. Um, did you get enough or did Michelle and Laura get enough pictures for good to have a good choice what to put on the cover? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's been completely uh, determined yet, but I think that they felt as though they had a uh, sufficient amount to choose from. Oh, and, good. Um, we'll put something together for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dave, how are we doing with volunteers on the other commissions and committees? I. Uh, I don't believe we've lost any, um, maybe one on the energy committee, um, but I know the planning commission uh, as those that stepped down have been filled. So the, I'm sorry, the conservation commission. So the conservation commission, I believe is at their limit. Um, and the energy committee is kind of, even though we passed the new kind of bylaws for them, I don't think it specifies a number. Uh, maybe it did, but, um, uh, they have some room to grow, but um, I think that they're, um, you know, has stayed fairly steady over the past year anyways. Sure. I know the cemetery committee isn't always very active, but how are they doing? Uh, cemetery committee has been a hiatus since COVID-19. Thank you. Didn't they do quite a bit of work last year, Dave? Uh, as far as me, uh, I don't Chris believe that they did, actually. Uh, we, we, removed a tr we removed a tree up off a of county road. Um, but I believe that their meetings, um, had they not been 
um, actively meeting since last spring as I know it, as far as I know it. Yeah, but I I do know they they did quite a bit at Trask Cemetery on GUV's property, so. Uh, Tom has kind of taken that on, um, being out by the, the greater Upper Valley mm -hmm. site there. Uh, so um, that wouldn't surprise me that um, Tom did something there, um, possibly even with greater Upper Valley resources. But um, uh, I know that he's kind of looked after that one as almost as if, um, you know, it's their own, but uh, he's looking after it for us. Yeah. If anyone is looking for a nice snowshoe after our big snowstorm, um, that walk from the bottom of Mill Street up to Trask is amazing. Really? Aside from the highway. Ignore the highway. <laughs> it's otherwise amazing. <laughs> okay. We, it's, the cemetery committee, I think, also put flags out on Memorial Day. You're right, Martha. They did. Um, they did volunteer to help out um, the veterans with that. Oh, that's good. Well, if there are any more questions today, we can move on to the uh, correspondence, which will cover the power line. Um, upgrade they're talking about. So this is basically as far as as, as far as I understand it is basically um, uh, rewiring um, or as they label it reconductoring um, an existing um, channel and um, structure that is there presently. Uh, they've got the mapping in there. Um, I kind of submitted it to you as, you know, kind of a heads up that this is coming down the pike. Um, you know, if you had any comments, just know that, you know, it's there, what they're doing. Um, I don't believe there's any new cutting going on, um, but uh, it is um, existing. Might be adding uh, a wire um, or you know, a layer um, might be going higher, but um, I'm not exactly sure of the specifics on there, but that's more or less what um, what this is about. Sure, they are going higher and they're changing where the transformers are. Uh, okay, can you help me with the mapping? Um, the, from Tassville, um, it follows, the power line follows Route 12. And then at some point, um, it does look like it avoids the, the village. Um, What's it, um, Phil? Um, I, 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 I want to be sure that what I'm looking at avoids the Three Corners village as far as where the work, where the work is going to be done. No, it, it, it veers off, Phil, quite a bit from the village. Um, it's an existing, it's an existing um, swath that's there now. Um, so as you see farther up uh, Route 12 towards Woodstock, um, you can see where it kind of goes, starts to go cross country. It detaches from Route 12. Right. Uh, it goes, it yeah. goes goes cross country towards Windsor. So you can see where Route 12 kind of almost starts to go in a 90 degree angle towards 91. Right, it heads east. Um, and, and that's where you can see Route 5 and 91. That's where the intersection of, you know, the, the three corners intersection is. So it's quite a distance from three corners intersection. Yeah, Phil, that, that takes off from Route 12 right near the end of Heartland Hill Road. Ah, okay. And, and goes from there across country pretty much all the way to Windsor. Right. Well, so what I had in mind... To the, to the station, wherever that is. Right. I mean, that's what I thought on the map, but certainly with our intersection project kind of cooking up, I didn't, wouldn't want to yeah. have that be interfering or anything. Yeah, it's a it's a three-phase line, a, a big big line with three wires okay 
Uh, Gordon and Dave, I have a kind of a pet peeve with these projects. Um, as, as you know, I live on the north side of the public road and often will travel north on the Kuchy Road. Um, and just beyond the town line at the old grandpa's <coughs> sand pit uh, is a solar installation. And um, that was put in three years ago, four years ago. Uh, and just this past summer, the, the final poles this were taken down, the small poles were taken down. Um, and uh, I, on my own property, uh, Three Mountain Power has replaced poles, but yet the other providers who are using those poles still have wires. Um, so I'm wondering if there's a way we can make a comment to request that along the corridor of Route 12 that people drive by that we can request Green Mountain Power to take down the old pole and demand that their people who are renting the space sort of move their wires up onto the new poles. So we we don't so that we're not left with double, double poles. Uh, I don't know, so. Yeah, I don't know how far you get. <laughs> I, I I haven't gotten very far with my own property, but I I since it, it is a request for public comment. Um, yeah. I was wondering if, in fact, we as the select board made a comment whether that might have more weight. Um, yeah, it's it takes years. It always does. And the good news about most of this line is it's just power. Mm hmm. I'm not sure about Long Route 12, but it goes through one of the fields we use, and uh, there's no no wires there except for the power line. Yeah. So, so Phil, is there is there a mechanism you're proposing? What it it sounds like you have a request that I'm not clear on. Well, uh, if I'm understanding the 45 day advance notice package that somewhere in here, I think I read that we can have, there's going to be a public hearing. And I was wondering if we as a select board could make a request of this, of this on this project or of this project um, to, to eliminate any double poles that may, might exist. I mean, I would say, me, myself, personally, I would be happy to affix my name to such a thing, Phil, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll leave as the, if the select board would do it, up to Gordon. Sure. Uh, why, don't, um, why don't we try to write up something, Phil? Uh, okay. I'd be happy to. Yeah. And uh, then we can deal, we've got time, I guess. Uh, we can have it on the, the next meeting. Sure. The resolution, just some sort of a request. Okay. Better aesthetics. They actually do pretty well, I think. Aren't those poles, don't they treat those poles in a certain way and they're kind of like they're not good? to dispose of, they're hard to dispose of. They're classified as hazardous waste. That's what uh, the pole, it, it's a, for me, to me, it's a bit of a sore subject because we try to get some to use at the farm when we're building things. They're hard to come by because uh, they want to chop them up into little pieces, put them on big trucks, take them off somewhere way, way, way away and properly dispose of them as if as if that would be better than having them hold up a building, which is, to me, extremely dumb. But I think it's rules that are hard to change. Yeah, so I think I think putting something in about that, Phil, might be a useful a useful thing. About having the public be able to use the oracles. No. 
sorry about the 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 hazardous nature of the poles themselves and leaving them up to fall down and blah 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 whatever yeah that didn't get me anywhere because i have a brace <laughs> on the green mountain pole that kind of broke and was they moved their wires and put them on a new pole but uh, comcast and the other providers still are on the broken pole wow. yeah. Uh, I'll certainly need some wordsmithing from my esteemed colleagues here, so I'll get something written and get it out. Good. My, good. I'm sure Martha will be happy to edit to that. Yep. But Mary, we have such a zealous editor in you. You're right, you're right. I like to volunteer other people to do things. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else? Any, any other correspondence, Dave? That's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There we go. We're way ahead of schedule. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Next five minutes. Well, I would like to know why Dave is sitting down instead of standing up at his desk, per usual. Dave, what's going on? Did you break your foot? No, I, I cleaned my office. <laughs> I, actually can, so can I can actually sit. put my paperwork down. How's that? Yeah, space to sit now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I knew there was something going on. I don't have anything else, Gordon. Okay. All right. Someone like to make a motion? Shortest meeting ever. Yeah, I'll I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I can, I can second the, the motion. <laughs> you guys just gotta drag us out, don't you? Gonna, yes. No, we can make it an hour, huh? <laughs> I won't know what to do with the rest of my evening. My God. I'm going to get sushi. Oh, where? <laughs> that Yama? place is quite glad. Oh. Cool. Okay. All in favor of adjourn, gentlemen? Aye. 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 That's it, then. We're done. Shortest meeting ever. Yeehaw. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Thanks, All right, thank you, everybody. Yeah,